Hi everybody, it's your AP Bio teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are back with our third unit in AP Biology. This is called Cellular Energetics. And as the title suggests, this is all about the energy of the cell. How does it get it? How does it use it? What does it use it for? And everything having to do with energy and cells. All right, so we're gonna start this unit by talking about enzymes and cellular energy, then move into two huge processes that happen within cells and are really essential to, well, life. Um, and those are photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So it's really gonna be a lot of chemistry kind of in this, in this unit on cellular energy. So without further ado, let's get started. Today's topics, um, I'm combining them into one video today, are 3.1 and 3.2. Uh, 3.1 is enzyme structure and 3.2 is enzyme catalysis. All right, and we're combining them both into one video here. Um, so to start things off here, as I was just kind of saying, this video is, or, or this video series in this unit is really focused on cells and their energy. And what cells use energy for, or one of the things that cells they use energy for are metabolism. And metabolism is defined as the totality of an organism's chemical reaction. So we're gonna be talking about chemical reactions quite a bit in this unit because if you really, 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 really want to get down to it, all life is is a very complex array and sequence of chemical reactions. So anything you've ever experienced or anything that's ever happened is because of chemical reactions. So let's talk about them, huh? All right. So here's the thing about metabolism. An organism, as I put down here, requires a constant input of energy and macromolecule exchange. So two things organisms always need is an constant input of energy. They need to be taking in more energy than they're putting out, and they always constantly need to be taking in macromolecules in order to build their cells and, you know, extract energy from them. Um, they also need to be getting rid of the waste products or the byproducts of those metabolic reactions. Um, so what, co what goes in must come out, right? And a cell cannot, or a living thing cannot reuse energy. So there always needs to be more energy coming in. Um, so how is metabolism kind of like, how do we organize it? Um, well, living things tend to do their reactions to, that's a relative term. They're, they tend to do their reactions in what we call metabolic pathways, where a one molecule is alter, alter, altered, I should say, altered in a series of steps resulting in a product. All right, so this is a very generalized example of a metabolic pathway. Reactant A becomes product B, where product B becomes reactant B, becomes C, and becomes D. And each of these reactions are mediated by what we call enzymes. Um, but we'll talk about those in just a little bit. All right, so how chemical reactions work, one thing gets turned to the next, and the next thing gets turned to the next, and the next thing gets turned to the next. Um, so I took a class on biochemical metabolism in college. It was a really, really tough class. Shout out Dr. Barber. Um, but it was really a lot of memorizing specific metabolic pathways. And I say specific because they are very, very specific, and we'll talk about why um, that happens later on. But generally speaking here, we can categorize metabolic pathways into two different categories based on whether they break down a bigger molecule into smaller components or simpler components, like say breaking down a protein into amino acids, or whether they take smaller components and build a more complex molecule from that, like say taking amino acids and building a protein, or taking monosaccharides and making a polysaccharide. So we call those catabolic pathways that break down a complex molecule into smaller components, and anabolic pathways build up larger molecules from those smaller components. All right, so think about this. When you eat something, you're taking in not only the macromolecules, but the energy from the bonds that hold those macromolecules together. All right, so what your digestive system does when you take that in, um, it breaks down, it uses catabolic pathways, or it uses catabolism to break down the large molecules in that food, to break it down into smaller, tiny, tiny little pieces, so it can A, extract energy from, in the form of bonds from those molecules, and B, use those smaller components to build up molecules that your body needs. All right, so literally you are what you eat, and you may have heard me say that before, but I'm not sure. 
All right, so both of those are how we can kind of categorize um, metabolism. And what I'm showing you here, this is a series of reactions. This is called glycolysis or a reaction sequence. Um, and this is something that we're going to talk about a little bit when we get into cellular respiration because this, the, this is, process right here is the first, uh, this is the first third of what we call cellular respiration or the production of ATP. Um, and as you can see here, it's a pathway of reactions and these are all mediated by these molecules called enzymes, right? So one molecule gets converted to the next, 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 and we got 10 different products here. All right, and again, this is only a third of cellular respiration. I'm not saying you have to memorize all this, but um, it is, you get what I'm saying. It's a metabolic pathway. All right, so as I was suggesting before, let's talk about enzymes, because that's really the focus of topic 3.1, 2, and 3. Um, so enzymes mediate every reaction in a metabolic pathway. Without enzymes, reactions would not happen the same way. They wouldn't happen as fast, or they wouldn't really happen at all. And remember, like I said, life is a complicated array of chemical reactions. Enzymes, you may have heard of this in a chemistry class or a physical science class before, enzymes act as what we call biological catalysts, which are molecules that speed up reactions without being consumed in the reaction themselves. So enzymes allow these reactions to happen at a reasonable rate so that a living thing can extract enough energy and, you know, break down those larger molecules to build the bigger molecules, all that stuff. All right, so without enzymes, we'd be pretty screwed. Um, so here's another example of a metabolic reaction. You, we've talked about two reactions before. We talked about hydrolysis and we talked about dehydration synthesis, or I guess those are types of reactions, right? Um, so if we take in, if I drink a bunch of milk, right, the main carbohydrate that's found in milk is called lactose, all right, and lactose is a disaccharide, and it looks a lot like this. Um, in order to break down lactose into glucose, which is really what my cells are going to be able to use to build ATP, because glucose, little pointer here, glucose is the starting product uh, or the starting reactant of glycolysis. That's actually why it's called glycolysis. Um, there needs to be something that happens here in order to break down that lactose into glucose that my cells could use. Well, lactase is an enzyme that allows this reaction, well, allows the breakdown of lactose into galactose and glucose. All right, so lactase, what we can say, it catalyzes the hydrolysis of lactose. It allows lactose to be broken down by water here. Okay, so that's what enzymes really do. Um, but how do they work? All chemical reactions involve breaking bonds and forming bonds, and thus every reaction, even the ones that you know we gain and get, uh, we get a net output of energy from, they require energy to start. The molecules need to be oriented, and they need to be kind of like twisted in such a way that they are ready to react, and that requires energy, and that energy is particularly called the activation energy, and it's defined as the energy required to contort molecules so that they can react. So the example that I have over here, it's like pushing a ball to the top of the hill so it can roll down. All right, there's supposed to be arrowheads here. I don't know, it gets weird converting from one format to the next, but there's, there's some arrows, right? Here we go. Yep, there's arrows. All right, so activation energy. All right, if I'm, try, if I'm calling the reaction the ball rolling down the hill, activation energy is getting the ball up the hill so it can react, so it can roll down the other side. All right, so it requires energy to get the ball to the top of the hill so that the reaction can happen and it can roll down, right? But here's where enzymes come in. Enzymes lower the activation energy required to start a reaction. All right, so what enzymes really do, this is obviously grossly simple, simplifying it, but what enzymes do is they kind of lower the hill. They, they kind of lower the hill and they lower the amount of energy it's going to take to even start the reaction in the first place. All right, so a catalyzed reaction through the, uh, through the action of an enzyme requires less energy to begin than an uncatalyzed reaction. So take a look at this graph down here. Uh, this red line is showing what we call an uncatalyzed reaction, and the blue line is a catalyzed reaction. And on the y-axis over here, we have the total energy. Um, so as we can see, we both end up with the enzyme in what's called the substrate, and we end up with the enzyme product over here. Okay, but look at how much less energy is required 
with the catalyzed reaction than with the uncatalyzed reaction. It goes way up here, right? So it requires a lot more energy in order to do that without the enzyme catalysis. So that's really the job of an enzyme. And each enzyme is very, very, very specific. It only catalyzes one type of reaction. So for remember how I said, again, I'm gonna say this for the third time, life is a very, very complicated series of chemical reactions, right? There's so, 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 so many enzymes and enzymes are so diverse because reactions are so diverse and enzymes only catalyze one type of reaction. So for example, going back to the real life uh, enzyme that we talked about before, lactase will only catalyze the breakdown of lactose into gal galactose and glucose. All right, so you're not going to find lactase breaking down, uh, I don't know, you're not going to find lactase breaking down proteins. You're not going to find lactase uh, regulating genes because enzymes tend to do that as well. Lactase only does one job. It has one job, and that's to break down lactose into galactose and glucose. All right? Um, so enzymes, what even are they? What kind of molecules are they? Well, they're proteins, um, and their job is to bind to a substrate, and the substrate is the molecule that the enzyme react that the enzyme acts on. Okay, so enzymes are what we call substrate specific. They're only going to bind. They're built in such a way. They are they are shaped in such a way that they only bind to one particular substrate. They're specific. They're picky, right? So, for example, lactase going back is the enzyme. Lactose is the substrate. Lactase acts on lactose which is the substrate, and converts it into the products, which are galactose and glucose. All right, um, moving on from here, let's talk about, here's a nice little schematic here, how does an enzyme work? All right, so here's my substrate, and there's an enzyme. The substrate is red, and the enzyme is purple. Um, and I put the enzyme in such a way, this kind of like blocky shape over here, to show that it has an active site. And the active site is where the um, substrate tends to bind. All right, and when the substrate binds to the enzyme, it's what we call the enzyme substrate complex. So as I put over here, substrates enter the active site, uh, which is where it's going to react, um, and it's going to bind to the enzyme. The enzyme changes shape to enfold the substrate and hold it in, which is called induced fit. The cool thing about proteins is that proteins, when they're stimulated to do so, they can change shape. So when this substrate binds to the enzyme, the enzyme kind of closes it in and changes shape in such a way that it's not going to leave and it's for sure going to react once it's bound to that active site. So once we get into the active site and we form the enzyme substrate complex, uh, the enzyme really, it does its job. It doesn't make it react, but it allows it to react um, spontaneously and by lowering the activation energy, lowering the energy required to start the reaction. All right, so the enzyme doesn't like do the reaction, but it allows the reaction to happen. You get what I'm saying? So substrates are converted into products in the next step, and then what happens then? Products are released from the active site. So once they're converted into the, from the substrate into the product, like say lactase into glucose and galactose, they're released from the, the active site, the enzyme changes shape once again and allows the products to be, well, set free from the active site. And the active site then becomes available for the new substrate, which is, again, going to be the same kind of molecule. Lactase is not going to be reacting anything else other than lactose. That's a big no-no. It's not going to happen. All right. Uh, so here's what I call a generalized enzymatic reaction. And again, they're supposed to be arrowheads on either side of these lines here, okay? E stands for enzyme, S stands for substrate, P stands for product. All right, so again, what's happening here is that the enzyme and substrate are separate, the substrate binds to the enzyme, the enzyme causes the substrate to react um, and become the products, and then, of course, the products are released by the enzyme. So that's how enzymes work, that's what they're structured like. That'll be it for this video. Please let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you next time.